Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today, I'm going to have another look at Anthony Riley. Now, a little while ago, I put out a video in response to his density video. And the problem was that that was a rather short video that he put out. And the explanation behind it stretched out over an hour and many people didn't get to see it. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and unpack that video and I want to break it down into more bite-sized pieces. Now today's video is going to be on the independent variable. This is a key feature of Mr. Sleeping Warrior's arguments for the flat earth. He likes to disregard all science and claim that it is pseudoscience if the investigator doesn't personally wiggle the independent variable. Well, we're going to have a look at exactly what an independent variable is and whether or not it's necessary for the examiner to personally manipulate it. Or is it important for him to choose the right variable to be the independent variable? So Okay, so let's just have a look at kind of a basic framework for a scientific experiment. The first thing you do is you observe some natural phenomena, okay? Second, you develop an explanation as to why that is occurring, and that's called your hypothesis. Now, then you have two variables that you have to come up with. The first one is the independent variable. This is what you think is the cause of the change in what's called the dependent variable. You know, I think that there's a second consideration on the independent variable that's very important to keep in mind. The independent variable is what is being changed, and it's having an effect on the dependent variable. That can be a direct effect between the independent and the dependent variable, or that independent variable can set up a process that will result in a change in the dependent variable. For example, if I press on the accelerator of my car, that sets up a chain of events where more gas is put into the engine, the engine puts out more power, and I speed up. The independent variable is the pressure that is being put on the accelerator. However, that's causing a process to go on, specifically more gas being put into the engine, that results in a change in the dependent variable which is the speed of the vehicle. Now, part of the fun of setting up an experiment properly and understanding what is going on in the experiment according to your hypothesis is understanding whether or not your independent variable is directly affecting your dependent variable or if there is an intermediate process that the independent variable is affecting, which in turn is affecting your dependent variable much like the engine and drivetrain is between pressing down on the accelerator and the car going faster. Now, how do you check to see if there's an intermediate process going on between your independent variable and your dependent variable? Well, in our car example, we could turn the engine off and then press down on the accelerator and see if the car moved faster. That would clarify that there is indeed an intermediate process, and that's the function of the engine and the drive chain. A recent example that Mr. Riley did was try to float an egg in salt water. He changed the density of the salt water, called that his independent variable, which is correct, and then attributed that density to the rise in the egg. All right. Unfortunately, he's missing out on the intermediate process and that is the effect of gravity on buoyancy, which is the force that caused the egg to rise. Now, the way you check for that is you try and do the same thing outside of the influence of gravity, and then see if you get the same results. Mr. Riley did not do that, and had he done that, he would have found that egg wouldn't have moved. Now let's confirm this. We'll go and look at actual definitions of what an independent variable is, and is not. Now two examples of common independent variables are age and time. They're independent of everything else. 
The dependent variable, sometimes known as the responding variable, is that which is being studied and measured in the experiment. It is what it changes as a result of the changes to the independent variable. Now, this is kind of an interesting and very helpful definition because what it's saying is I change this and then I measure the result in this. Now, if this has an effect on, on my dependent variable, changing this for any reason will result in changes here. Now, one of the things that uh, people like to say is that you have to quote unquote wiggle the independent variable and that's very true. How do you wiggle time? You wait for time to pass. How do you wiggle age? You just wait for something to get older. Now, by definition here, we can see that both are considered independent variables. They are never a dependent variable because we can't change time, nor can we change age, and there is no factor that we can employ. There's no variable that we can employ that will result in a change in time or age. So let's continue to go down a little bit further. Now here's another one right here. What is the definition of an independent variable in science? Independent variable definition. An independent variable is defined as the very variable that is changed or controlled in a scientific experiment. It represents the cause or reason for the outcome. Independent variables are the variables that the experimenter changes to test their dependent variable. Now, here we're seeing some of the cause of confusion in the flat earth. Now, the first part of that definition, the independent variable defines the variable that is changed or controlled in a scientific experiment. So the key meaning here is that the independent variable is something that is changed. Now, the second part is the cause or of confusion in flat earth. The independent variables are the variables that the experimenter changes to test their dependent variables. Somebody that has a very concrete approach to this would say that this latter sentence says that it is the experimenter that must change the variable personally. Okay? This is excessively restrictive. Uh, for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, several of the other definitions we've already looked at don't even mention the investigator. Now here's the kicker. We have certain things. Time, age, gender, that physically cannot be changed by an investigator. Yet, they are by definition independent variables. What this does, in effect, is demonstrate that the investigator does not, in all cases, have to personally manipulate the independent variable for it to be an independent variable. The investigator doesn't personally change those things. What he does is he selects time or age, which are varying variables, as the cause of his, the changes in his dependent variable. Now, once again, I think that it's important to clarify this point. The independent variable is the cause or the reason of the change in the dependent variable by definition. It can directly cause it. It can be the reason that something occurs that changes it, such as pushing the accelerator, increasing the flow of gas to the vehicle, and having the vehicle accelerate increasing the density of salt water to the point that it is greater than the density of an egg, in which case buoyancy would cause the egg to rise. Buoyancy is dependent on the downward acceleration of gravity, and buoyancy will not occur in the absence of gravity, just as the car will not accelerate if the engine is turned off. Oh, here's an interesting one. Can gender be an independent variable? Gender cannot be imposed or changed by the investigator, so it is always an attributed independent variable where men and women are compared in the study. 
i.e. when it is an independent variable. Since I'm testing the differences between men and women, I don't need to manipulate whether one of my test subjects is a man or a woman. What I can do is I can design the study to select a group of women and a group of men. You know, here's the problem that the Flat Earth has with science. Science explains the natural world very well. So what they do is they go through these definitions and try and cherry pick out something like this requirement, this non-existent requirement that the investigator personally manipulate the independent variable in order for it to be a valid experiment. They also very subtly change the definition of the independent variable from the presumed cause or reason of the change in the dependent variable to the designated cause of the independent variable. It's subtle, but as we can see with uh, Sleeping Warrior's salt water and egg experiment, he changed the density. That was the change in the independent variable that he did. However, he didn't account for the intermediate step, and that is buoyancy, which is dependent on gravity. When this was pointed out to him, rather than repeat the experiment outside of the influence of gravity, he simply hand-waved it off by citing his own personal cherry-picked definition of the independent variable and saying it didn't need to be addressed. Well, it does need to be addressed it has been addressed. And in the absence of gravity, it doesn't happen. So that gravity is the engine that makes the accelerator move the car forward. This is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hey, take a second. Go ahead, reach down there, hit that like and subscribe button. We just crossed 10,000 subscribers and we're heading for 20. This rabbit hole's too deep for me Feel my brain getting real sore